In this installment of the Comfortable Words series, I'm going to tell you about another prayer practice I often recommend to people, the Ignatian Examen. The Examen is a fairly popular prayer practice. You can even get apps for your phone that will guide you through it, or through variations of it if you want. One of the reasons the Examen is so popular is that it's relatively short. It's intended to take only 10 to 15 minutes start to finish. Since most people can find an extra 10 to 15 minutes in their day, it's appealing for that reason, and it's also less intimidating to beginners. It also proceeds according to a very clear structure. But another reason for its popularity is that the examine, which comes from a series of spiritual exercises invented and recorded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, is one that helps people to better understand what God is calling them to do. All of Ignatius' spiritual exercises are helpful for discovering your vocation. And whether you're wondering what to do with your life or what to do with your spare time in re retirement, they can help you with this. And either way, the examine will, over time, lead to insights that can guide you in that important work of discernment. But more than that, whether you have questions about your vocation or not, the examine can help you to grow more aware of your relationship with God and how your actions and decisions relate to this relationship. In this video, I'll go through the process of how to practice the examine, but first, I'll tell you a little bit about the person who came up with it. As I mentioned already, the examine is one of a long series of spiritual exercises passed down to us from the founder of the Society of Jesus. St. Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius was born near the end of the 15th century in the castle of Loyola in the Basque country near the border between Spain and France. Before his spiritual conversion, which led to his creation of the exercises and founding of the order, Ignatius began his adult life by pursuing a military career. He was taken with chivalric literature, tales about heroic knights going on exhilarating quests, and early on, Ignatius sought to imitate the heroes of these tales and perhaps even to become famous for his courage and military exploits. His military career, however, was cut short at the Battle of Pamplona in 1521, when he was gravely injured in his legs by a cannonball. Ignatius returned home and began a long and painful recovery which involved several surgeries. It was during this period that he underwent his spiritual conversion. While convalescing in the hospital, we're told that the chivalric stories that were his favorite genre of literature were unavailable. And instead, he was given stories from the life of Christ and the lives of the saints. These types of collections were quite popular at the time and both nuns and monks belonging to religious orders and also other people use them as devotional literature. These collections were also what was available at the hospital since the hospitals were run by religious orders. And so, as Ignatius read these accounts of Christ's life and the lives of the saints, he found himself applying the same zeal for imitation that he had applied to the tales of courageous knights to the piety of the saints. He found that he wanted to strive toward holiness, to follow after the example of the saints, and to devote his life to God. As he read, Ignatius would imagine himself taking part in the events he was reading about. Now, this type of imaginative meditation is something he would go on to explain and recommend to his followers later on when he composed the spiritual exercises. At the end of his recovery, Ignatius set out on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to begin his new life of devotion to God. But on his way, he stopped first at a Benedictine monastery, where he confessed his sins, he received visions, he gave away his rich clothes, and he hung up his soldier's sword and dagger. He then spent about a year living in a nearby town called Manresa, where he would spend extended periods praying in a cave, and also where he composed the spiritual exercises. 
These exercises survive today and are still used by many people throughout the world. The form in which they're written is as instructions for a spiritual director. When people undertake the full set of exercises, which is a month-long process, they do so under the direction of an experienced spiritual guide, usually at a Jesuit retreat center. But it's also possible for people to use individual exercises on their own, like the examine. Ignatius would eventually complete his pilgrimage to Jerusalem, more than one in fact. And after studying theology for a number of years, both in Spain and at Paris, he would eventually become a priest and would receive papal authority for he and his followers to become an order, the Society of Jesus, popularly known as the Jesuits. His book, The Spiritual Exercises, which he composed at Manresa, also received papal authority and could then be published from the middle of the 16th century. The book is divided into four weeks, each with a particular theme. It begins with the theme of sin and God's mercy and moves toward contemplation of the resurrection and God's love. Typically, a person undertaking the exercises would receive instruction from the spiritual director who would guide them and suggest material for contemplation. They would then spend several hours each day on the exercises and at the end of the day meet again with their spiritual director to discuss how the day had gone. The object of undertaking the exercises is for a person to learn about God's will for them in their life in particular, and for this to lead to a devotion of one's life to God, much like the one Ignatius himself experienced. And while the exercises do involve a type of self-examination, kind of like an elaborate version of what a person might do before going to confession, the examine, which is the topic of today's video, is something a little different. Examine, spelled E-X-A-M-E-N, means a weighing more than it means a series of questions. The Latin word refers to a piece of a balance scale. And the practice gives you a way of weighing the moments of your day to see how they fit or don't fit with your spiritual life and with God's call for you. It's a type of spiritual review. This exercise is a good one to take on on its own. In fact, it's intended to be used in an ongoing way by people who've already gone through the full series of the spiritual exercises. And it can be helpful to others as well. Since people generally use the examine as a review of the day, the usual time to do it is in the evening. Though there's no reason you couldn't review the previous day in the morning if that's the time that works best for you. You can also review a longer period, like the previous week, though remember that the exercise is intended to be short, 10 to 15 minutes altogether. So it's best to review a short period of time. The examine begins, first of all, with gratitude. As you begin, remember that the day is a gift from God. And as you review it, review it with gratitude. So the first step is to give thanks to God for the gift of that day. Then, say a short prayer asking God for enlightenment. What you're asking for is for God to show you what he wants you to know about the day and about yourself, where he has been at work. Then, after saying this prayer, proceed to review the day. Some people will find it helpful to move through the day chronologically, as though you were playing it for yourself like a movie. But others may find that this is too restrictive, and they're spending too much of their mental energy reconstructing the order of events. If this is the case, it may be better not to focus too much on the order of events, but rather to think back on the day in a general way and to contemplate individual moments as they present themselves to you. Either method is fine. Do whichever works best for you. What you're looking for, what you're weighing, if you will, as you review your day in this way, are moments of something called consolation and moments of something called desolation. Though consolation and desolation are being used here as technical terms, 
and not in their popular meanings. Consolation in this sense is that which draws us out of ourselves and toward God. Moments of consolation make us aware of God working in our lives. They're things that lead to growth and that are truly good for our souls. They tend to make us less aware of our selfish desires and more aware of others and of God's grace. And moments of desolation are the opposite. In moments of desolation, we will forget that God is working in our life and we will tend to be wrapped up in ourselves. So in a review of the day during the exam, this is what we're looking for. We should give thanks for the moments of consolation and ask God's forgiveness for those moments when we forgot about him or acted selfishly. As with the type of mental prayer I talked about in my last video, we may find it helpful to make specific resolutions based on what we learned about ourselves in our time of prayer. These resolutions are a way for us to take what we learned with us. And particularly, when we can resolve to take or avoid specific and concrete actions, they can guide us and help us to avoid falling into the same behavioral traps as we move forward. Finally, conclude the exercise with a spoken prayer. Perhaps you have a favorite prayer that would be appropriate, or you can say the Lord's Prayer, or simply give thanks to God for what he's shown you. You can probably see that in practicing the examine over time, we stand to learn a great deal about ourselves and about just how God is working in our lives, both through the events we take part in and through our relationships with other people. Over time, we may even begin to recognize certain patterns. We may discover that we have certain gifts that lead to many moments of consolation. And we may begin to recognize ways in which God is calling us to use these gifts to his glory in our daily lives. And so to sum up, here again are the steps for the exam. Begin with gratitude. Ask God for enlightenment. Review the day, paying attention to moments of consolation and moments of desolation. Give thanks and ask for forgiveness as appropriate. Make resolutions and end with a spoken prayer. I hope that this has been a helpful explanation of the examine. As always, feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or if you want to talk to me about prayer. And know that we at St. Olaf's are praying for all of you. I'll leave you now with a prayer that was helpful to me when I was studying and when I was discerning a call to the priesthood. It's a prayer, of course, by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Let us pray. Lord, wherever thy glory be best served, whenever, however, there, then, and in that state, let me thy servant be. Only hide not from me thy divine love. Help me to trust thee to the uttermost. Teach me to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wound, to toil and not to look for rest to labor and not ask for any reward, save that of knowing that I am doing thy will. Amen.